Good morning, Year 5, and welcome back to Maths for this week. We are starting a new topic on position and direction, but before we begin, I'd like you to start um, to try this starter activity where you need to calculate the missing angles. To be able to do this, you need to think carefully about how many degrees there are on a straight line. When you're ready, move on to the next slide and I'll show you the answers. So here are your answers. To be able to do these sorts of questions, you must remember there are 180 degrees on a straight line. To find a missing angle, you need to subtract the given angle from 180, and then you'll get the answer. So as I said, we are looking at position and direction now, and our learning objective for today is to identify position in the first quadrant and that's so we can answer questions that look like this. Um, to be able to answer these sorts of questions we have to recap two key skills. Our key skill one is to write the coordinates of points on a grid and key skill two is to read the coordinates of the vertices of a shape. So before we begin what can you remember about coordinates? Take a couple of minutes just to jot down what you can remember and then when you're ready, unfreeze the video and we'll carry on. Okay, so let's remind ourselves of some important points. The grid will always have an axis. The axes are the main lines here and here and they are numbered or lettered depending on the axes. Okay, the x-axis is the horizontal axis along here and the y-axis is the vertical axis here. Okay, we have coordinates so we're able to identify the position of something. In this instance we can see where E is by using coordinates. And in which order are coordinates written? Well coordinates are always written with the um, X axis number or letter going first, followed by the Y axis. So let's look at our first activity and our first key skill. Key skill one is to write the coordinates of the mark points on a grid. So our question here is, what are the coordinates of each point? So. First of all, we need to think about how coordinates are written. They always have an opening bracket. They're followed by the x-axis with a comma, followed by the y-axis, and then we close the brackets. Okay. So does it matter which way round we write the coordinates? Absolutely. We must remember to put the x-axis first. If not, we can get a completely different coordinate and it will be incorrect. And I wonder if you can remember um, the little saying that we use to remember the order. We always say along the corridor, so we use, oh, I'll use this one, and then up the stairs, along the corridor and up the stairs. So let's have a look at position A. We need to remember to open the brackets we look at the position of A along the x-axis, which is 3, follow it with a comma. Then we look at the position on the y-axis, which is 5, and close the brackets. And there's our coordinate for A. Let's try for B. We open the brackets. We go along our x-axis and we've got 8, followed by a comma. Then we follow the y-axis and we've got a 9 and we close the brackets. Now, I think you probably all remember this as this is more of a revision lesson for you. But I'll do one more just to show you. Let's look at the position of C. I need to open the brackets, 
Let's move that a little bit up there. Go along the x-axis, which is 8, followed by the comma. Sorry, getting my computer mixed up. Followed by a comma, followed by the y-axis. So we go along here, we've got 1 and close brackets. And there are coordinates. I expect you've remembered how to do that, but let's carry on and look at a different um, numbering of the x and y axes. So in this one, um, the numbers are actually going up by two and some of the positions are halfway between the both. So we have to think about the scale very carefully. If it's halfway between, we know we need to have the, num the number halfway between the two points on the axis. So in this case, E will be at five. Okay, so let's have a look at position A. Position A is open brackets, 18 on the x-axis, followed by a comma and four on the y-axis. You can see I've put this little reminder here along the corridor and up the stairs. Let's this time look at B. Just open the brackets. If we go along the x-axis, we're at 20, comma, and now this time B is halfway between, go along, 14 and 16. So I know the coordinate there will be 15 and close the brackets. And finally C. I've deliberately put this one on because sometimes children get really confused if there's a point marked here. If we open the bracket, the point is zero on the x-axis and also zero on the y-axis. So don't be frightened if you see one like that, that's absolutely fine. It can be at zero comma zero. Okay, so it's your turn now. And I'd like you to have a go at these show me questions. Um, for the first question here, I'd like you to record all of the coordinates down. But for this one here, I'd like you to record the coordinates of D, E and F, because I've already done A, B and C on the previous slide for you. When you're ready, unfreeze the video and I'll give you the answers. And here they are. How did you do? Let's now look at key skill two to read the coordinates of the vertices of a shape. You can see I've got a cube on my um, coordinates grid and I have actually circled the vertices. Now the vertices are where two sides or two edges meet. I hope you've remembered that from our work on shape previously in year five. So I've highlighted those. And sometimes you'll be asked just to give those coordinates. So I tend to start in order so I don't get muddled up. And I tend to work from the bottom left, top left, top right, bottom right. And I can write the coordinates. Again, we've got to remember along the corridor and up the stairs. So let's start with, <clears throat> excuse me, this position here. And I open my brackets. I go along three on my x, x axis and up four on my y axis. And that's the coordinate. Okay, I'm going to put a comma in between my answers so it's really clear to whoever's reading them. My second one, my top left, again, I'm still at three on my x axis. My y-axis, however, I'm now, if I go up the stairs, I'm now at eight. And I can close the bracket and move on. I'm now going to do top right, go along the x-axis to seven. And along the corridor to eight again. 
And you're probably noticing a little pattern here because with the shapes that we're using, of course, we're going to have some similar um, readings for the x-axis and the y-axis as we go along. This is really helpful if you're ever given a question where it's not marked. Bottom right is 7 on the x-axis and up to 4 on the y-axis. And there's our answer. Here's another one for you. Okay. Um, this time it's a larger rectangle, but again, I'm just going to identify those vertices. We're only reading the coordinates for these points here. Just going to rub that out for you so you can see a bit more clearly. Okay, and we can do exactly the same thing. Again, I always start at bottom right so I don't miss any outs and I work methodically through. You might want to start somewhere differently, but make sure you check that you've included all of the vertices to get your mark. I'm going to open the bracket. If I go along the corridor on the x-axis, I get to three. I put the comma and I go up the y-axis to two and close the brackets put a comma in between so it doesn't look muddled. If I do top left, this time I'm still on three on the x-axis, but I need to go all the way up the stairs to 10 on the y-axis. Moving to the top right vertice, I go along the corridor and I'm at now at eight on the x-axis and I go up again to 10 on the y-axis. And finally, bottom right, open my brackets up. I'm still at 8 on my x-axis and 2 on my y-axis. And they're all the coordinates for the vertices of the rectangle. I'd like you this time to have a go to write the coordinates of the vertices of this shape that I've given you. If you'd like to pause now, and when you're ready, you can move on with the video. And here are your answers. I hope you've got those all right, remembering the brackets. Remember to make them really clear with commas. And also, I hope you've remembered along the corridor and up the stairs and haven't put your coordinates the wrong way around. So I've set you some tasks and I'd like you to start bronze and silver first, please. Uh, when you've completed those, I'd then like you to check your answers and you can listen to me talking through gold when you're ready. So I've given you for gold a do you agree or disagree question. We really like those and we must remember to use our talk scaffolds and I've put some examples here for you to answer the question. I've also said, how can we check Mo and Alice's answers? Mo says the point is at eight. Three and Alice, uh, Alex sorry, says the point is at three, eight. I think the best thing to do to answer this is to actually work out the coordinate for yourself and then you can agree or disagree. Good luck with that question. You're now ready to move on to finish gold and do platinum and emerald. You can stop the video here and then when you're ready, move on. Um, the answer sheets are available on the school website. Please check your answers highlighting um, how you've got on, just like you would do if you were at school and then you can take a few moments to reflect on your learning. How is your confidence level today? I hope you're feeling really confident as this is a revision lesson. That's our first lesson for today. I will speak to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.